hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Emily I love DIY projects thrifting and really all things crafting today's video is super fun it is a studio McGee dupe video so her new fall line came out a few weeks ago and I was looking online and I came across three items that I really really liked but I wanted to see if I could make them within my budget so let's get started on these dupes The first DIY is this olive potted arrangement and it is $30 at Target and I knew that I could make it for a lot less. So this vase I already had from a previous project I did probably a year or so ago and I had painted that vase with plaster by Waverly and I did the texture paint with the baking soda. So that was the base color and I am taking Cafe Olay which is an acrylic paint, and I just mixed some baking soda. I did not do 50-50, I probably did about 20 or 30% baking soda, just to have a little bit of texture. So because I already had the textured base color, I didn't wanna brush it on, I wanted to give this more texture, so that's why I took a, a chip brush, and I'm just dabbing the that Cafe Olay color all over the vase so you can see there's not full coverage some areas look a little heavier than others but that is exactly what I wanted so once that dried I mixed a little bit of the hazelnut by Waverly which is a chalk paint and I just do the same thing I'm just going to stipple it all over and get the desired look I kept referencing back to the picture on online um, because I'm, I obviously cannot recreate it 100%, but I was trying to get pretty close because I did think it was a very pretty, a pretty vase, but I just keep going over this until I am happy. And once that is completely dried, then I clear coat it with a Rust-Oleum matte clear coat and the vase itself is done. And you can just see here all of the different texture that dabbing it on or stippling it on has. So these olive um, branches are from Hobby Lobby. I got them when they were 50% off. So one of the bundles was larger and it was $13.99 but 50% off. And then they also have a smaller bunch which was $7.99, 50% off. So I grabbed, I, I thought that the large one would be perfect and it really was. I grabbed the smaller one just in case I needed a little bit more. I ended up using this um, the smaller bundle as well but you you don't have to um, you know especially if you're really trying to work like on a, on a budget this one bundle the $13.99 one um, that was perfect so I just stick floral foam in and I don't hot glue it in case I want to do something else with this vase later on and I just you know bend the the olive tree branches to the desired look I'm going for. I don't want them straight up, but I don't want them, you know, like flopping over too much, if that makes sense. So I just kind of bend the branches to where it looks as natural as possible. And um, I end up putting this in my guest bathroom because I am slowly working on a makeover and that video will be coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, but this project is done and I, I'm just, I'm so happy with it. And the fact that we could do it for a lot less than $30 makes me so happy. All right, so here's the comparison. The threshold one was $30 and we were able to make ours for 12, which is more than 50% off and I love that. So this is what started it all for me. I saw this branch arrangement and I thought it was gorgeous, but not for $50. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna dupe this and 
I'm going to do other ones as well. So I ended up thrifting this vase. Um, it was in a recent thrift haul video, so I can link that in the description. I got it for $1.50. And here I am just mixing that cafe au lait and the hazelnut together um, to get a slightly darker color. And I'm going to mix baking soda in with it. Um, it's kind of personal preference what you want to do. I didn't want it to be like super textured, so I did not do 50-50. I did a little bit less of the baking soda. I just want some texture. So add the baking soda to the desired texture that you are looking for. I ended up having to do two coats of this mixture because of the floral design on the vase. Um, I had to do two coats to cover it completely. And make sure you're getting the inner part of that rim of the vase because depending on the you know greenery that you're using you'll be able to see you know into the top part of the vase so make sure you you paint on the inside of that as well so i am at this point i've added um bark brown it's an acrylic paint um to this mixture to kind of darken it up a little bit and i took this chip brush which i have had for so long and it's like got that perfect wear to it and i'm just like dry brushing this mixture on and I kept looking back at the um like the inspiration picture because I was trying to see I I knew that it was a little bit heavier towards the top and the bottom and not so much in the middle so that's what I was kind of going for so you can see that the chip brush just adds that little um here I'm adding more bark brown because I wanted even more dimension. So like I said, I just kept looking at the inspiration picture and, you know, just dry brushing um, or, or not, depending on the look I was going for. And I just kept going until I was happy. And you guys can do the same exact thing if you want to make it darker, if you want to make it lighter. It, it really depends on, you know, what color scheme you're going with too. So these florals I found at Hobby Lobby in the fall section. So they were not 50% off. They are 40% off right now. So they were, they're still pretty affordable at 40% off. I grabbed four bundles or bunches because I wasn't sure how many I would need. And I ended up using all four of them, but I think these were the closest to that berry look that the branch had from the Studio McGee one. And um, I didn't even add floral foam because I just bent these and they it worked perfectly fine. And like I said, I did all four. Um, three looked pretty good. I could have probably gotten away with three, but I just like how full the fourth one made it look. All right, let's see how we did. So the Studio McGee one came to $50 and ours came to 19, which is more than 50% off. And I love the sound of that. I'm gonna be switching it up for this one and doing a reverse canvas. So this one was $60 and I absolutely love the oil painting. I think it is gorgeous, but I really wanted to see if I could replicate it um, myself. So I got a two pack of um, of canvas from Hobby Lobby. Those are I believe 16 by 20 so they're not the exact size as the one from Studio McGee but when I was looking at the larger size canvas because I really did want a larger one but all of the canvases that are larger have that piece of wood down the middle of on the back side of the canvas to support the larger canvas. So I kind of was stuck at using the 16 by 20 size, um, which is fine. It, it turned out perfectly, it turned out like I wanted, so I'm happy with it, but just to let y'all know, 
If you don't know already, the larger ones have that strip of wood on the back side for support down the middle. So here I'm just removing the canvas. I try to remove as much of the staple or as many of the staples as, pos as possible. I have a full tutorial on how I do my reverse canvases. I will link that video down below. Um, no judgy because it's one of my first videos, but I do definitely go more in depth. So I, if you saw, I did sand a little bit on this part of the, of the wood because it was a little too textured and rough so I wanted to smooth out and I'm using the um, antique wax by Waverly to tr to act as like a stain so I applied it all over the top of the um, the canvas and then I'm taking a baby wipe and wiping it down and it like I said it kind of acts as a stain um, but it dries in like a fraction of the time and it doesn't smell either so it's great so I will just do a disclaimer. I am not an artist. I've never done this before, but I really just wanted to give it a shot because I love trying new things. So I am taking all acrylic paints and I have a little thing of water and I'm just going to, you know, dip my brush in the paint and then dip it in the water and apply it. So it's more of, I guess it's kind of more watercolory than obviously oil painting, but it's the same. It, you know, you get the same effect. Um, so this one, I had my laptop open so I could look at the picture as much as possible because I really wanted to try and get it as close as possible. So I am going to be using um, a couple different colors. I'm using um, this base color was Cafe Olay. And then the one I'm about to use right now is Blue Fog. And then I'm also going to be using charcoal. These are all um, acrylic paint. They're um, the Anita brand that I get from Hobby Lobby. So I will make sure to leave all the colors that I used in the description, but those are the three. I had a green out, as you can see. Um, I thought that there was some green in it, but the closer I looked at it online, um, I didn't really see any green. So here I'm just doing the same thing where I add you know, I dip my brush in the blue and then I, you know, dip it into the water. And here I, I believe here I mixed some of the charcoal with the blue fog to, um, darken it up a little bit because of the, the, the picture itself, uh, or oil painting itself, it had, you know, the different levels or different colors so I was trying to like I said recreate as much as possible and I just really had fun with it um like I said I'm not an artist but this was a lot of fun and I kind of want to do it again with with other colors and just see what happens so here I'm taking the charcoal and doing what I've done before with the water and the chip brush and I really hope that you guys like like it as much as I do. So I'm going to stop talking and let y'all just finish watching. So I realized I never explained why I was adding painter's tape to this canvas. I was doing that because I wanted to make sure that I did not paint all the way to the edge of the canvas so that when I put the frame back on it, there would be a little bit of white. Because if you look at the the oil painting, the, the painting doesn't go all the way to the end either. So that's why I use the painter's tape. And I'm using the staple gun. I will link it in the description. It is great. It is super heavy duty and I love it. So. I am going to try and make sure that I do not get any wrinkles. I do end up getting a little one, but it's not the end of the world. So I start on one side and then I go to the opposite side and pull it and then staple it down. And I do the same thing for the top and bottom. And as I go around, I'll do one side and then pull it and then staple on the other side and vice versa. So that is what I do all the way around it. And at the very end, I 
originally was not going to add hanging hardware to the back because I was just going to like rest it on the shelf in the bathroom because that's where the other painting that I had in there it was it wasn't hanging on the wall, but because this was smaller than I had planned, I ended up adding, added, adding hanging hardware. Oh, so this is in the bathroom right next to the olive, um, plant that we did in the first dupe. So I hope you guys like it. All right, let's see how we did. So the Studio McGee one was $60 and ours came in for a total of five. I know it's a little smaller, but I think it turned out pretty good. I hope you guys like it too. I hope you guys enjoyed those dupes. Please let me know which one was your favorite. I think my favorite was the second one with the vase with the red berries. It just inspired me for fall and I cannot wait to start crafting for fall. Those videos will be coming out starting in September. That is when I start decorating and I have so many ideas coming. I cannot wait, but please let me know which one was your favorite. Please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.